What's going on, fellas? Today I am going to be rigging up a couple of flipping rigs. I thought you guys might want to watch me do it. We'll kind of talk about it, and uh, we'll go from there. Anyway, one of my lighter flipping rigs, like I've said before, I'm a smaller guy, so you can flip on whatever length rod you want to. You know, so many people use a 7.6 only. That's fine. I've got a 7.7. Seven. We're going to rig up here in just a minute for some punching. But anyway, this particular rig that I'm using right here is actually, I'm using a 7 foot 844C uh, IMX G Lumis. So anyway, just to get started here, I've already got my uh, bobber stop on there to keep my weight from going up the line. I'm just going to raise it up. There's no need in me changing a bunch of stuff. Basically on this one, I'm just changing the hook. I was doing some some a little bit lighter fishing the other day and so i had a had a uh, just a regular offset shank worm hook but i'm actually gonna do some some fairly serious flipping tomorrow so uh, i'm gonna keep my weight on there the weight i've got on there is a 5 16th i believe i'm gonna leave it on and then i'm going to tie on this this straight shank it's got the keeper on the top up there let's see if we can find where to put it there you can see it right there anyway i'm gonna tie it on of course like i said before i'm on Use the old trusty Palomar. I've got a uh, seven to one reel. I'm putting it on a 20 pound test fluoro. I think this is actually uh, Seaguar Tatsu. I use some Sunline and, and some Seaguar, but this is actually Tatsu. It's got a little smaller diameter, and I've really kind of started liking it. It's really easy to cast, real supple. Got to wet it real good. I think that's what people do when they don't. Uh, they don't have the best of luck on tying the Palomar with the uh, floor carbon. I think they're just not wetting it enough. You got to spit on it a little bit. Anyway, I like to do that. I'll put a, uh, I'll go ahead and put my, my crawl on there. We did a crawl tube video not too long ago. This is, we're just going to go with a regular crawl here. It's a black and red. I like it in off color water. And uh, we're just going to Texas rig it. Pull it up there over that over that keeper there let it rest on that keeper and uh rig it up like that we're gonna bring that bobber stop down there pretty close i like to have a little bit of movement in my in my sinker but uh anyway that's pretty much the size of it right there i'm gonna pull that hook out and put it on my reel here wrap the line around my rods it doesn't hang up on everything else i'm putting it on a an E7 Corrado. It's a 7 to 1 reel. Works really well. Now on this one here I've got the uh, I've got a 6 to 1 reel actually on this one. It's just a Bass Pro reel. It's that uh, Johnny Moore series. This one here I, I still like the bobber stop. and I'm going to show you something a little different with this one. I'm going to put the bobber stop on there. Just like we normally do. Just like that. We're going to put our weight on there. You notice, this is my punching weight. It's like an ounce and a quarter, ounce and a half. I'm not sure, but that ought to be plenty. I like to get by with as light a weight as I can on my punching. I use a lot of one ounce, but that in there is definitely bigger than one ounce. I'm going to say it's probably an ounce and a half. So what I'm going to do here be a little bit different. I'm actually going to put another bobber stop on there and kind of protect that knot a little bit. It may be overkill, but... Uh, that's what I'm going to do. I probably should have done the other one that way too, but I forgot to. I'm going to put it up there like that. And uh, you find the hook. There we go. Give me a hook to put on there, and we're going to be ready to jack some jaws, that's for sure. I got to tell y'all a little flipping story of mine. I ought not tell it, I guess, but it is kind of funny. When I learned to do this this punching, I really didn't like it much. For several years, I didn't like it. And uh, anyway, we were down in Florida fishing on Okeechobee, fishing FLW on Okeechobee. I think it was back in early 2000s sometime, early to mid 2000s. And this, this kind of fishing had really gotten hot. I mean, I just learned about it, man. That's, that's how they were winning everything down there in that area. And so I had practiced it and practiced it and practiced it. And I, man, I was terrible at it, okay? Anyway, we it was, it was I think, the day before the tournament started. 
and I had a fellow in the boat with me, and we were running around fishing a lot of scattered um, hyacinth patches. And uh, I got to where I catch them. I was, I was catching some fish. And right before we came in that day, I caught a nine pounder, and uh, which is the biggest Florida fish I've ever caught. And uh, maybe by Florida standards, maybe it's not that big, but to me it was it was big. It's like nine five or nine six. I can't remember. I've caught bigger ones here in Arkansas, but it's the biggest Florida fish I'd ever caught. So anyway, I was on some fish up there on the upper end of the lake, up there around Buckhead Ridge or somewhere like that, and I didn't want to flip. That was not what I wanted to do. So I went up there. I was catching some on a trap, some on jerk bait and stuff like that, and uh, so that's what I wanted to do. Well, I don't know. I have some of the worst luck when I go to Florida. I love going down there. When it comes to tournament time, it's just hard for me to draw a check down there for some reason. It's something always changes. And uh, see, I always, I'll even lick that uh, that braid too. Keep it from rubbing, keep it from burning itself. Anyway, as it turned out, I went up there and I fished for my fish. And I didn't do any good. The first day, the first day I went up there, then, uh, let's see here. I've got this, I'm gonna interrupt my story here just for a second. I'm gonna move that bobber stop down there. Let that weight go down there. And like I said, I like to have a little bit of little bit of play in my in my weight and my bobber stop. Anyway, it's ready to go. I'm gonna rig me up another crawl on there. But anyway, it's, it's, I rig it just up just like I did the last one, so not much to talk about there. Anyway, I'm down in Florida. First day is terrible. I go up there, I think I weigh in like three fish or something like that. And uh, there it is right there. Anyway, the next day it's like I gotta go for broke. I mean, I'm nowhere close to check range. I mean, I've got like three fish that weigh five or six pounds. I mean, it's terrible. You know, it's horrible. If, if it was that good, I, I can't remember if it's been years ago. But anyway, we get out there and that year everybody was in the monkey box area. If you're familiar with Okeechobee, you know where monkey box is. And we're over on the east side of monkey box and I've got my co-hanger in there and I think he'd actually caught some with his partner the day before. And I told him, I said, well, you got cursed today cause you're with me and we only had, you know, four, five, six pounds where it was. And I said, I'm gonna make a complete change. I'm going to the monkey box. And if you know anything about Florida fishing, Okeechobee in particular, if you're not seeing other boats around, you're not in the right place. And I should have known the first morning when I got up Buckhead Ridge, didn't see anybody else, I should have known it was a problem. Mud had blown in, couldn't catch them, long story short. Anyways, I said, I'm gonna go down there. I had already been down there in practice, so I wasn't just coming in on a bunch of folks. I, I knew what to do down there. I just didn't really wanna go up there and fish in a bunch of folks. I just don't like doing that. But that day, that's what we decided to do. So anyway, we get out there, and I don't know what boat number I was or anything, but we get over there, and we're on the east side of Monkey Box. And I got get out this big rig like I just rigged up, and I start flipping in the holes that of those uh, hyacinth patches. A lot of scattered patches. You had little lanes you could go through. I mean, there were boats everywhere. And we were like on the east side of it, and I got a bite. I flipped in one of those holes, got a bite. Let him have it. I set the hook. And when I set the hook, I guess he had spit it out. Whatever the case, when I set the hook with all of my force, I came out of that hole. That ounce and a half weight, tungsten weight, came out of that hole. It came by my head. It sounded like a muzzleloader going by my head. Muzz muzzleloader bullet, which it basically is. When it got to the end of that line, at the end of my, at the end of my line there, it kept on going. It went out across that whole tournament field out there, and I just knew I had killed somebody. And I think that was that was my very first FLW tournament as a pro. And I couldn't even look up. I just knew I had killed somebody. And so I just kind of, I kind of just stayed down for just a second. And I just kind of sheepishly looked over my shoulder, and I was looking to see if anybody was dead or hollering or anything like that. Nobody said a word. Me and my co owner just died laughing. But anyway, it's just nuts, the kind of stuff that happens when you're fishing. You know, it's just always some old crap going on. But anyway, that's how I rig up my flicking, my flicking, my flipping poles. And uh, like I say, I'm going to do a little bit, little bit of lightweight flipping tomorrow. 
I'm also going to have my heavyweight flipping too in case I run across any debris mats or any kind of high ascent mats where I'm going. So anyway, I hope you guys got something out of watching me rig it. Appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you guys subscribing. Uh, if you like it and you're not subscribed yet, well, please do. Anyway, I'm going to catch y'all next time. Thanks for watching.